Hey everyone, welcome to this radio channel and this is another video for the beginning shortwave listener. Now I had a few things that I talked about, um, you know, trying to find a good spot for radio listening, um, trying to find more sources in your home, trying to, um, you know, basically receive those signals uh, by putting out maybe a little wire outside or extending your antenna a little more. So there's something that is a little more complex and it's the shortwave propagation. So I'm going to attempt here to as easily as possible explain shortwave propagation for the beginning shortwave listener. So you might notice day, night, as the day goes on, frequencies shift, stations from certain countries are heard, not at the other times, and you're wondering why is it like that? What's so complicated about all of that? And you know, most shortwave listeners, especially the beginner, and even you know, people that have been listening for a while, don't necessarily understand well how propagation works. So, first major difference: day and night. Day and night. How do you explain this? Here it goes. Daytime. When solar radiation. So when the sun is up. Basically, the ionosphere splits into three layers. There's the D layer. Here it says E layer, but in many textbooks it's F1, F2 layer. But it doesn't really matter how they're called. The importance is to know there's three layers. So why is low frequencies, like 6 MHz, not propagating at 1 PM local time? That's because the sun is high and that D layer here in the bottom absorbs lower frequencies. So it cannot propagate. Basically what happens, and by the way this picture here is not totally accurate in the way it's demonstrating things. Uh, you gotta understand that signals will bounce off even the F layer at the top but it's dependent on the frequency you're listening. So you notice that 6 megahertz or you know 9 megahertz is dead in the daytime that's because that D layer here absorbs most of the signals that are broadcast on these frequencies and it leaves the band pretty much dead unless you're in a very localized way so for example here I hear CFRX Toronto which is I don't know about five or six hundred kilometers away because in a very short skip the D layer will propagate 6070 but it doesn't propagate very long distance so it's very local but you'll notice that at 1 p.m. you might hear stations on 17 megahertz or 15 megahertz that's because these don't get absorbed as much by the D layer and actually go and move on to the F layer and bounce off the F layer and come back down so because the F layer is higher up, technically also means that the bounce, one bounce, makes much more distance in one bounce for the signal from the station's antenna to your radio's antenna. Um, in the nighttime, <coughs> that layer, the three layers you see here, get reduced to one layer and it's just the F layer and because the D layer isn't there anymore well no absorption 6 megahertz will propagate uh, even you know like 80 meter band 3 megahertz uh, basically all the low frequencies are alive because there's no absorption anymore it just bonds off the F layer which is the highest layer of all and the good layer for propagation but now you're going to ask me, yeah, but I don't hear nothing at 17 megahertz at midnight. That's because the F layer in the middle of the night is not ionized as strongly as in the daytime. The daytime, the sun's radiation really strengthens the F layer at the top. And that goes with the solar cycle. So the higher the solar activity, the more ionized the F layer are, is and the higher the frequency it can actually support. 
So, you know, in textbooks, we learned that shortwave is from 3 to 30 megahertz. And yeah, okay, true. That's for the wavelength. But the properties of shortwave of bouncing off the ionosphere aren't exactly set in stone from 3 to 30 megahertz. They go also a little more down. They also go higher up. So when solar activity is high, the F layer at the top here is so ionized that it can support 50 megahertz, 60 megahertz, 70 megahertz. Some people actually use that to DX on a 6 meter M band and that's at 50 to 54 megahertz. So in the daytime, because it's ionized much more, 17 megahertz will propagate well, 15 megahertz will propagate well, but in the nighttime, there's no solar radiation to keep it up. So it is much weaker. It supports the low frequencies, but the higher frequencies tend to just go through it and get lost in space. But there's seasonal variations of that. So the F layer in the northern hemisphere summer is at nighttime a little more solid. It has a little more um, you know, concentration if you want, which means that in the summer months, June, July, you might actually hear signals on 15 and 17 megahertz at midnight because of the longer days and the shorter nights, the F layer is a little stronger at night. So it actually lets propagation work. But in the reverse, in the winter time, very long nights mean F layer is much weaker much weaker and now the what we call maximum usable frequency drops very low uh, here in Montreal typically in a January winter night in low solar activity I can tell you that maximum usable frequency will often be below 9 megahertz and even sometimes below 8 megahertz it's just amazing but in the reverse in the sun the summertime uh, maximum usable frequency of that layer at midnight can be 20 megahertz it's very surprising sometimes what you'll hear. The second thing you need to know about propagation is you need to know where it's dark and where it's sunshine where you are. Why? Because I told you that nighttime propagation and daytime propagation is different. That also means that signals often are kind of halfway in dark, halfway in sunlight. So depending on the time of day, right now you see that North America, South America is in full daylight. We're midday, it's about noon here, a little more. But as you move on through the day, you see that this darkness area is moving slowly to the uh, left of your screen towards you. So if you listen to a station later in the afternoon and you want to hear, say I'm here, I'm in Montreal, which is right here uh, where I put my arrow. I will listen to Europe at 6 p.m. tonight, local time. That's 2200 hours universal time. Well, most of Africa and Europe is going to be in the darkness area. That means <coughs> the signals from Europe will often be typically in a lower frequency range. So there you'll hear Europe at on, you know, in the summertime 11 megahertz, 9 megahertz or 6 megahertz. In the winter time, are very often below 9 megahertz. So a lot of stations want to crowd 6 megahertz or 49 meter band because it's one of the bands that will propagate well. So that's because part of the signals transmitted are in darkness so they need to lower their frequencies even though here it's still sunlight at 6 p.m. <clears throat> because part of the signal is coming from the darkness. Same thing that map is very important and I'll post the link by the way of this map which is a live map so this map every time you, you load it is actually uh, real time of what part of Earth is in darkness or not. You can use that to understand if you'll hear a signal or not. So for example, I'm so much in the daylight right now that forget about 
listening to signals on 6 megahertz, even 9 megahertz. So say you see in a list, oh, India is transmitting right now on uh, 6030. Yeah, it's fine for that region because it's dark, but there's way too much uh, sunlight here for that frequency. It's going to be absorbed by the D layer. So you can't hear 6030 from India at noon or 1 p.m. in the afternoon. It's impossible. But if they use a higher frequency and it doesn't get absorbed too much or it doesn't get lost here, say India once again here is using 11 megahertz. Well, 11 megahertz is kind of a transition zone, so it's something that yeah, I would try just to see if by any chance um, I could hear it. But of course, most of the signals I hear will be above 11 megahertz and even above 13 or 15 megahertz most of the time. But then again, you know, don't stop from trying. It's by trial and error that you understand at some point what you hear and what you don't hear at certain times of day. So of course, say that the daylight, the sun is, say the sun is setting here over, um, well, we're going to check here. So here's Saudi Arabia, the uh, Persian Gulf. They are getting into the darkness zone. So say you're a listener here in the Persian Gulf. Well, you'll know that, okay, everything that's to the east, that's the right side of your screen, I need to listen to on low frequencies because it's darkness from that area. So I want to listen to Australia. I'll try an Australian frequency that is low, 6 megahertz, 49 meter band, 7 megahertz, 31 meter band. Um, maybe try 9 megahertz, 31 meter band, you never know. But then again, that listener in the Persian Gulf wants to listen to a US station, it's daylight. So US stations that might come into the Persian Gulf will typically be 13 megahertz and up, or 15 megahertz and up, like the 19 meter band, 15 megahertz might be heard. So that's why typically here, when I get to a point here in Montreal that it's um, darkness, you know, there's the, sun, the, there's the sunset happening. Well, I know that when sunset's happening, to the west it's light, but to the east of me it's dark. So all stations that are from the east, Europe, Africa, typically I'll listen to them in lower frequencies. But to the west, it's still sunlight, and sunlight across the Pacific up to Australia. So I'll hear Radio Australia on 17 megahertz because the path from Australia to Montreal is good daylight. But if I want to listen to Europe, I'll typically listen to Europe on lower frequencies. And there's a shift, a transition of that in seasons. So it's very important to understand that. So in summer months and the winter months, that is, the rule stays the same, but it actually extends a little. So in the summer months, I'll know that I can listen easily to stations on 15 megahertz or 17 megahertz. Even though we're still, you know, the sun is set for two or three hours, I still can listen to some of these stations. Um, there's the fact that a lot of, you know, the North Pole is going to be in sunlight all the time. So some signals can actually cross the pole because it's sunlight all the time and come up to me even if it's midnight or 1 a.m. on a high frequency like 15 megahertz. But in the, su in the winter time, forget it. 15 megahertz is probably going to be dead even about an hour after sunset simply because there's so much darkness now that the maximum usable frequency is down. So this is going to be in the description below the video. Just click the link. You'll have the world map with you know daylight and nighttime. And uh, it's useful to, to see that as you're listening to shortwave and as you'll understand where you can listen to signals on low or high frequencies depending on daytime or nighttime. Well, you know, you'll be able to understand why you can't listen to such signal, but why this other signal does come in. Also in the description uh, below the video, I'll put the Wikipedia, um, the Wikipedia shortwave bands. It has the shortwave 
frequency ranges for the uh, international broadcast bands with okay description of you know good or bad daytime or nighttime reception so for example here 17 megahertz it tells you day, day reception good night reception very seasonally with summer best so it tells you um, you know enough information to know when or not um, you can um, listen to a frequency range and you'll also have the ranges of the different international broadcast bands for shortwave stations at the same time and you know as you use this and you use the map and you use your radio regularly you'll slowly get the hang of it and understand why propagation is the way it is so basically tune in your radio try to understand why propagation it is and of course there's a factor that's added to this low solar activity or high solar activity will change a lot of the characteristics of what frequencies you listen to also and uh, typically we're in a, we're getting in the low um, the low part of the solar cycle which is always kind of a problem for shortwave radio uh, we typically like to have higher short, uh, you know uh, solar activity as it supports higher frequencies better and uh, even low frequencies you know it's very surprising so that's pretty much it. Um, you know what? If you're not sure this video, maybe you should view it multiple times. You know, if you've watched it once, why not watch it again and again if you want to get a hang of it? Um, and of course, don't hesitate to ask questions. And of course, we're continuing this series for the beginner, so there's going to be more videos coming up. So check it out um, as you'll learn a little more on how to uh, basically. Um, understand the shortwave listening hobby which is a great hobby and uh, hope that uh, you enjoy my videos if you do please subscribe give us thumbs up and hope you enjoy our videos thanks for watching